in to the online broadcast network. After Buzz TV, over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries, and your number one source for after show entertainment. <laughs> TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! Oh, yeah! Cam, we're so sorry we're not using your song that you found but we are here talking shark tank free. oh phil sing it go ahead i don't know the words. Why, what happened it's like you wanted to sing and then i tell you to sing and then you don't sing that's what i want there it is here we are um shark tank episode 13 Oops. season six yeah oops forgot that no worries oh overall i think it was a pretty entertaining episode what do you think phil this was a great episode to the start of 2015 yeah it was it was, it was, we got some, we got some good stuff. We do. So let's just go right into it. And I'm really excited Uh-oh. because we, we, we open up, um, 500,000 for 5% and what should be the, the product, but coffee meets bagel. And we have our own Marissa Serafini who found a love connection on coffee meets bagel. Come on. You got to tell us about that right now. You got to tell us. It works. It works. <laughs> no, that's it. That's all you're giving us. Come on. Put the camera on you. Tell us the story. What happened? What kind of bagel was it? A cute <laughs> bagel? A cute bagel. It works. Is that the guy okay. that I met? Okay. You met I, him on Coffee Meets Bagel? Yeah, I admit, you know, I was full of doubt and didn't think it was going to work. And then, you know, maybe a month later, I found him. But you tried the other, right? Did you try Tinder and all the others? Not to, not to throw you on the spot, but what made Coffee no. Meets Bagel better? Coffee meets bagel, it's just one person a day. Whereas Tinder, you can get up to like 100,000, depends on how many you do in a day. So you get all the most random people in one day. Coffee meets bagel, it's just one individual person. So you have enough time to actually decide if you like that person or not. So wait, I have a question. Because I feel like with this presentation, they didn't do so well explaining the product. Like they kind of just were like, yeah, you get this person that's paired up through all your social media stuff that we think would be good for you. And you get, you know, 24 hours to pick whether you like them or not. But what, Marissa, what actually is it that you get? Do you get like a profile? But, but that's, a good, that's a good question. Now, let me just kind of stop you real fast. Do you think when it comes to applications, should they give like a phone to the sharks and be like, hey, try it out? Well, no. Well, time out. Uh, no. That, but that's that, like the equivalent yes of like no. tasting With a this bagel. One you couldn't. Bantam bagel. Like that's well, like it's here's a terrible your... name, but we'll get to that later. But there, you can't really do that. But my whole thing is my big red flag with this, and this is what I want to know. And I'm so excited. How did you guys not tell me before we started the show that I'm supposed to use this? But what I'm so excited about, I mean, I'm so excited about that. But it's like so many people are so fake on their social media. So how is this true? Like 90% of the people are extreme on Facebook. They either post stuff that makes them look like their Facebook like is life is so awesome or they're like, "Woe's me. This happened to me. Validate me." Okay, blah, so blah, the blah. question so Marissa. So how real is like I don't know if I would buy it just because of that. All right, so the, so Marissa, the question is uh, um, coffee meets ma- bagel, Michael. How different is he than real life? Coffee than, than real life, Michael. Well, he's a real person. I'm not quite sure on the difference between like coffee compared to other social media platforms, or just yeah. Like, I mean, I've genuine, never used any of them, and I would like if he was be actual, legit, wrong. genuine compared to all the posers and fakes people yeah. out there. But you know what I'm saying? It's like I've seen so many things that are like, I wish my life was as cool as it looks on Facebook. You know what I mean? Like people tend to post not their normal. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. But that's what, I, that's what I've seen. Like, when I look at my Facebook feed, number one, nowadays, it's like it takes me so long to even get to something that I care about. So it's like if someone was to judge who I am by my Facebook page, but I guess that's why I'm not somebody that would ever use social media. Well, I mean, you know, I, I, I like the fact, um, I, I, you know, trust me, any dating site is literally like uh, flies to poo-poo. Me, and the... 
You oh know what God, I mean? So like it's I it, all it I takes is one you, female uh, on the thing, and everyone's like, ooh, ooh, oh, like, 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 like. You know what I mean? So I like the idea that this was made for women by women, and it's kind of like the, the, there's a genuine. Look at you. Made for women by women. Look at you. I was just told by a female Brownie that, that a, a romantic walk on the beach does not constitute as a date. So in this new generation, I don't know what constitutes as love anymore. So you know what? Coffee meets bagel. Maybe um, you should try it, Phil. Maybe you will find that bagel in coffee or however it works. See, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I don't and like everything coffee. bagel. <laughs> I've never had a coffee in my life, so I'm just. I've had coffee, me. but I don't drink coffee. No, I anyway. don't either. Anyways, they, um, what is, some of the things They that, were so secretive between 100,000 and 500,000 I want to know why. Of, I want to know why they were so secretive and wouldn't share that number, because I can't really come up with a good reason on why they wouldn't share that number. Because if you have 450,000 users, it's better than 120,000 users. It would make it more attractive as a deal for the sharks. So why would you hold back on that? Because I think them, they though? had the lower scale. Of right, it. but then why would you just be like, oh, we have 100,000 and we're growing? And the fact that they were, I do agree with Barbara, I mean, pretty much everyone said it, that um, Lori said it too, that their salaries were a little high. I mean, when you're starting up a company, I mean, how are you taking $300,000 out of the company when the company is not making any money? It yeah, seems I mean, a little the, bit absurd. If you said, hey, like, we've really, you know, yes, we have to take out a salary, but that's to live, and, and it happens to be 19000 a year because that's the minimum we can live on. Yeah. I was like, okay. Well, that's that's funny. When I started my clothing line, that's what me and my business partner did. We literally, our first year, we, like, got together our bills, and we were, I was like, okay, $1,500 is my bills for the month. That's yeah. what I'm going to take. And he took the same. And it was like, that's kind of what, you know what I mean? We didn't live a lavish lifestyle that first year, but then we grew the business. And that's usually what you do in these. And I get they all come from these bigger jobs and backgrounds of making more money. But still, I feel like it's. it's well, that's the, that's the whole point that you take. Like, it's like, okay, well, you know, in order to have your own business, you know, you have your freedom. And so guess what? That comes at a cost. <laughs> That's not, th 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 there's a reason why it's called, it comes at a cost. Yeah. They seemed very um, cold, for lack of a better word. I think that's just because they were, grew up foreign. That's possible. I mean, maybe, I, maybe I'm reading that wrong, but it's like, if you're, if you're sharing a site that's supposed to be love, like, I want them, I wanted them to make me feel warm and fuzzy, and they did not. It was like, this is how it is. That's it. No. I, I mean, come on. Have you ever seen Mark Cuban offer somebody... $30 million for their company? No. And I said no. Which, I don't know. Do you think this is being something that's so big? Do you think it will grow? Do you think it will be that next match.com? I mean, the thing for me, too, it's like they, they were saying that one of the people from match.com was one of the investors. Why didn't they just hire them? You know what I mean? Like, how come match.com just didn't steal the idea? And, like, they already no, no, have I, this I platform. I think he's from match.com, but I, I think he's a former employee. Oh, uh, maybe. Yeah, I, I don't. It would be very unwise if you if you didn't outright buy him out. Yeah. To fund competition. Well, that's what I'm saying. It seemed very weird how, even that. Like, if you're with, I don't know. I I just again I, maybe I, it's I, something that I'm just a little bit foreign to. I just feel like. Here's what I don't. Uh, I I, don't I, I cannot get behind the fact that if at ten million dollars profit you just break even. That's ridiculous. That makes no sense to me. Whatsoever. I still think our dating app is way better. That if you're out somewhere, your little phone dings. If there's someone with in your area that likes the same stuff that you like, then you go and talk to the person, and you know you have stuff in common. Like I'm still sold on our app. I still think it's better. Fair enough. Fair enough. All right. So they don't get a deal. And five percent, as Kevin said, it's too little. It's too little. And they're asking too much. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like they should have... I mean, I don't know. I guess they need the money. But in the same sense, it's like none of the sharks are going to... The amount of work that's going to be required to make this something past $10 million where they're actually going to have profit to offer them 5% just seems ridiculous. Like, that doesn't <laughs> seem like it was thought out at all. Yeah. All right. Anything else about Coffee Meets Bagel before we move on? Marissa, anything else to add about Coffee Meets Bagel? How long have you guys been together now? Seven we can't months. actually hear you, I don't think, but... Oh. <laughs> since the summer, so seven like seven months. months. And how long were you on Coffee Meets Bagel before you found? One month. 
Right. She's going to the to the, to the bagel store. But the thing store. is, with Copy Meets Bagel, it's quality over quantity, and that's that's the thing that really distinguishes Copy Meets Bagel from the other like Tinder or whatever. Okay, keep it. <sighs> wow. Yeah. Crazy quality. quality. All right. Well, I'm glad it worked for you, and I hope uh, you know as we progress with Shark Tank that you uh, stay with Michael. I guess. All right. Anything else? We'll check back in in a couple months. Yeah, well, we'll do a Marissa update next season. <laughs> Looking back to Marissa, one month after Coffee Meets Bagel. No, I'm kidding. Um. All right. Well, let's move on. Unless you have anything else you want to say about it, fill up. Why is it got to be called Skinny Shirts? The next one, Skinny Shirts. You know. I don't know how I feel about this one. I'm kind of with Lori. I don't think it's uh, not that many women wear that anymore. Do they? Am I crazy? I don't know. I know I, I dress sporty. I was going to ask you. What, I don't know what the hell. I dress sporty. I get that. I would probably never wear the um, white but this is dress what I would wear. business shirt. This is you what... would wear this? No, 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 not the female version. <laughs> Let's be honest. Okay. Philip. <laughs> no, but like it's a very male thing to, to wear like a sweater over uh, like a collared shirt. It's a male thing. You've you know never what? seen I'm me wear that? I'm going to have to give it to you. Yes, I have seen you. You look super handsome when you do. And I'll have to give you that. But I think the, the majority of it is that with men, because your sweater over the top isn't supposed to be so tight-fitting, you don't see the bulk. So, yes, it would probably be more comfortable for you. It might be warmer. It might be more form-fitting or whatever. But I don't think it's as much of a problem as it is for a woman. Well, that's what I'm saying. Well, my point is, I feel like it's a male thing, and so I don't want, I don't know, this is, I'm going to get a lot of hate for this. I don't want to see women in this. No, I agree with you. I think it's a very, um, I think it's more of an old-fashioned look. I yeah. feel like back in the day. Conservative. Conservative. That's maybe a better word. Yes, I agree with women you. Women today are because it's business. It's like business casual. It's like, how does a woman dress up or sexify a business suit? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. That's the sexy meets classic, I feel like, is what this outfit is going okay. for. Um, I mean, I it was This could work in the service business. Could work, yes. Could work in the service business. I guess, I bet you there's a lot of women that will actually buy this and use this. Mm -hmm. um, I feel like... You know, it, it was a great presentation. The fact that she was in tune to, you know, the whole changing behind the mirror or behind the glass and making it sexy. Of course, that was, you know, interesting and kept it going. Um, I feel like, you know, I'm not so surprised that she didn't get a deal, but I feel like she could have gotten a deal. I'm surprised that uh, Lori didn't give her a deal, but it was because Lori kind of didn't like it. You know, I... I'm not surprised she didn't get a deal, but I, I will say Kevin had a great point. You keep saying all the things that messed you up. That's fine. Everyone goes to that. But tell me how you fixed it. And I'm not hearing how you fixed it. Right. I do, I do agree a little bit with um, the, the getting stuck and being your own you know, worst enemy in a sense when you let those stop. In. Like, it's almost like she was making excuses for it rather than just being like, this is what happened, but this is what I'm doing now. So you should hmm. get behind me now because I'm over that hump. She's kind of like, well, I'm still on the hump and I need your guys' help to get out because I can't do it. And that's the reason why my sales went down and it wasn't my fault and I have a good product. It was somebody, it was some other thing rather than being in the, the can-do attitude, yeah. I think is what was a little bit of the problem. And uh, so I agree, and, and Mark, just, I, I agree, the numbers didn't quite add. Like, you can't be making more with a bad company than you are with a better company and making less. It just doesn't matter. Right, but to her credit, I feel like, again, you, your nerves are shot. You, there's a lot of pressure. I don't think she was... I don't think it was as bad as Mark made it seem. I feel like she had a really good year. She went out. She got a lot of sales. She sold all this stuff. She realized that the product wasn't working for her. She probably got a lot of returns. She probably got a lot of problem mm -hmm. stuff. So she tried then to rectify the situation and couldn't, and it kind of fell apart. But I don't think that she had all this inventory to ship to fulfill the $350,000 worth of sales, and then it just went wrong. I feel like there was wrong product within that beginning sales too that might have gotten sent back that would make more sense to me because then she'd be stuck with it i think uh, i i i think um one of the solutions she should have said to these people is that she's rebranded the name she should have rebranded it's name. like a bar when a bar is failing miserably you rebrand it i mean anything 
<laughs> change your name, change your attitude, change your start, you know? Yeah. Um, all right, anything else about the skinny shirt? Yeah, and I kind of don't like the name. Like, the name skinny shirt, I feel like it um, ostracizes people. Or, you know, maybe that's not the right word. But it makes, like, does the heavy set woman going to go into a store and buy the skinny shirt? Yeah, it should even be, like, though form she could, fitting, like, right, it's anything. Even though it would help everyone and it would make everyone tighter and would make everyone less bulky i feel like it's again making that distinction that it's only for like the skinny per- or whatever i don't know i feel like it's a bad name yeah um all yeah, right so bad before names. we move on what do you want to tell us about phil i feel like you got something to say dang right i do the critics choice movie awards are this thursday on a and e it's the 20th annual critics choice movie awards for for uh, all of the the year we get so many of these critics talking about all the movies now we finally get to see what they pick and guess what it's hosted by michael strahan oh wow from kelly and michael and why that's amazing to me is because um our own maria menounos is very close friends with him she hosts um on kelly and michael multiple times when kelly's not able to be there and uh so i i have a lot of respect for michael strahan himself and, it and, then, and the gap in the ball. tooth, yeah, and the, the 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 gap in the teeth is, I like it. You know, it's funny. I have a picture that I'm going to show you afterwards. I had a gap in my teeth growing up, and I never had braces in it closed by itself. My brother used to sing a song to me. He used to go fall into the gap. It was really funny. So I Fair I appreciate the little gaps. side tangent, sure. Um, but you love movies. I love movies, and everyone listening, um, I imagine you love movies just as much as everybody else does. So this is definitely um, this is definitely for you. Um, Birdman leads with 13 nominations, Grand Budapest has 11, and Boyhood follows with 8. And I find Grand Budapest in particular interesting because it's a movie that opened up months, months ago. Usually, like, you know, these types of yeah. awardy movies are later in the year, so, um, and... We'll also, of course, be honoring people. Kevin Costner, Lifetime Achievement Award. Ron Howard, the Louis the Thirteenth Genius Award. And Jessica Chastain, the Critics' Choice MVP Award. Whoa. And that is... What a night. What a night. That is, again, this Thursday, January 15th on A&E. 9 p.m. for the East Coast folks. 6 p.m. for West Coast folks. That way you don't have to do the math in your head. Those three hours get you every time. They do. You're like, wait, every what do, single what do I want? time. So definitely, uh, you know, check it out. All right. Well, that's uh, you heard it here. Check it out. Uh, yeah. I wonder if it'll be some of the same winners from the Golden Globes tonight. Well, yeah. You gotta tune in. You gotta just tune in on Thursday night. Um, okay. Let's move on to Xander and his doorman company. I love it. it love it. It's good. It's so good. It's so true. Xander's so, like, I love when companies, not only do they have a product, but they solve a problem. Who, I don't think there's one person out there that's at one point in their life gotten the sticky note on the door. We'll be back after six. Or you have to go across town to pick up your package. The Which reason why worse. I ordered it was so that it came to my house, not so that I had to go across town to pick it up. And what's worse is you, you kind of never, I mean, to, you never really know when it's coming to begin with. But even worse, if you get that little inkling of um, this this is the regular, this is not the doorman service, right? right? This is UPS if, if they, or FedEx. If they say, like, hey, it'll come between 10 a.m. and 2 p.m., it shows up at 3.30. Never does it come in the window. And you're like, I, I got I, like, I to gotta go. Yeah. Although, you know what? I have to credit. This is a little bit of a side note, but I have to credit. I am fascinated by FedEx and UPS. I can drop something in the mail today. It can show up across the country tomorrow. Fascinated. But this doorman just makes it a little bit better. A little bit better. That's, that's what we need. Three and it is. It's true. And Lori, Lori said it. You know, a lot of people, especially like in New York, Chicago, cities like that, people do want doorman just because of that fact so that they can get packages and mail. So, I don't know. And uh, it's three ninety nine a package. Uh, I believe nineteen a month. They they are uh, you know right now most people that come in and they have this small of of a base um, don't get a deal. But he's uh, he's proof of concept. His he three. is proof of concept, and he's he's asking two hundred fifty thousand dollars for ten percent of his company, which is you know kind of a lot for proof of concept, but it's working. 
And yeah. it's a brilliant idea, and I think they can all see how it's going to grow. There, it, I forgot who mentioned it. I think it was Mr. Wonderful or Robert that mentioned it. It's kind of like Uber for mail packages because they yeah. use their own drivers. Um, I think it's a great idea. I love yeah. it. I want it. <laughs> Getting it. Well, and they have to come here first. I know. They'll soon. If they're in San Francisco, they'll be in L.A. next. Well, they t- why oh, actually, Chicago? no, they're going why to Chicago. Chi- why Chicago? You know, I don't know why Chicago next. Um, maybe there's some crazy statistic that... I, I would mean, like the, to they, know. they deliver, deliver more online packages to Chicago? I, I don't know. Because, I, I mean, it, apparently it was a good answer, but I would like to know, you know, is it, it, did, did Lori get giddy just because that's her city, or that's a good city well, to go after? Well, I mean, I'm sure she wouldn't just... She's smart enough to not make... get You know, like, I'm sure she liked it that it was her city, but... The fact that she offers, you know, something I don't think is just because it's her city. Yeah, but at the same, like, I mean, don't get me wrong. Lori's an amazingly smart woman. But who the heck knows statistics for average online shopping packages? Deliver, you know what I mean? Like, It if, might. If she does, kudos to her. Because it's not no, a stat that I No, it's not about know. that. But she might know, like, average, like, what... If you have an s- online store, if you sell products online, you can see that most of your shipments come from this city. Like, I think yeah. it would be very, very easy to figure out what cities order yeah. the most. So you can figure out from Amazon somewhere. To be fair, out of all of them, I think Lori would be the one to, know, of course, know that. Yeah. And I really QVC. wanted her to make the deal. But so we get Barbara says, which is very interesting. I don't know that we've ever heard it, like, this before she was like we all like it we all seem very interested let's all go in together and then robert was like i'm in Lori was like i'm in mr wonderful was not in and mark was not in um so barbara says for the three of them they'll do 250,000 for 20 percent and he was like no it's too much and he countered which i thought he was actually going to lose robert when he countered for 12 percent and robert was like fine i'll take that and he was still kind of waiting for Lori. and then Lori went out and he eventually gets to deal with robert but um i do everyone liked it i think it's a great idea i think this i think for 50 percent though he could have gotten Lori and robert you you know uh, maybe if you really don't want to give up too much then okay don't do the 20 for three sharks but go an extra three like at this point yeah. it's nickels and dimes just get Lori for an extra three percent who cares no, and I get that, but I feel like this guy's definitely, you know, a lot of times we go, come on this show and we talk about people and they make dumb mistakes and clearly it's sometimes it's like, did they ever watch Shark Tank? Because this happens time after time. And when he exited, like, that's what he was saying. He's like, I probably could have got more sharks, but I didn't want to screw it up for myself. So I feel like he had that moment of panic of like, oh, they're both going to go out. I don't if, you know, if he would have been like, let me make a phone call, maybe he would have lost both. I think that's what he was feeling. So that's why he was just like, oh. Okay, I'm going to go at Robert. Yeah, but they were saying they would have done it for 15%. Rob and Lori for 15 I feel like that was locked in. Right, but Robert was also saying he would have done it. Like, Robert would prefer, I believe, because now Robert gets 12% rather than only getting 7.5%. Granted, he only has to put in half the money, but at the end, yeah. if he thinks it's a good idea, he's going to get more. Like, the $125,000 doesn't mean that much to him, I don't think. All right. Anyway, anything else about the doorman before we move on to our final pitch of the night? I'm going to start my own called Sexy Doorman. That's kind of funny. <laughs> are you going to are you going to be the sexy doorman? I, in in the, your like show up like topless in a trench coat. In a trench coat. No, it's like it's like the ultimate fantasy, you know, like hey, I have a package for you. Oh, what my god, Phil. Just when I thought you were behaving. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We had a girl. For $3.99, behind... you can get Phil in his package. <laughs> For a skinny shirt, we had a girl taking her clothes off and everyone watching. You guys heard it here. You sign up now. You can find Phil at the PD's VTech. $3.99. He'll show up in a trench coat to give you his package. <laughs> My package. <laughs> <laughs> okay. okay, moving on. We've got Bantam Bagels, Nick and Elise. What? Okay. What the you, hell you're kind of name you're is New, that? You're a New Yorker. I what, am. I'm. Yes. What is it? A street? Like what? What? What affinity does it have? None, to me. That rung a bell. I could be wrong. I've lived in LA for a while, but there's no like Bantam. Ba- I don't get it. I don't. Like this would be the most why. insensitive thing in the world, but like September 11th bagels, like right. anything. To, like, kind of give it a personality. Well, that would have been 
terrible. I mean, my, September 11th. That was a bad choice, but I'll let it go. But you understand, like, that means something to you, to a New York. If, if your whole thing is like, this is a New York bagel, you know, and that, that we're going to now, now we're going to make it across the country and whatever else. Like, you're getting this great New York bagel. Bantam? I don't like the name. Nobody liked the name. Nobody liked the logo. Nobody liked the packaging. Um, and I agreed with all of them. Sometimes I come out and I'm like, mm, it was kind of okay. Didn't like it. Love the idea. Love the idea. Never seen the idea before. Looked delicious. Made me want one. Let's do it. Let's go to New York and get some next time. No, in New York. we can ship them. Right? Oh yeah, let's ship them. Let's ship them and then have the doorman deliver them. Uh, yes. yes. And then we'll go on Coffee Meets Bagel. Yes. I, While I would, wearing skinny shirts. <laughs> While wearing skinny I want to see you in a skinny shirt in your profile pop up on Coffee Meets Bagel with a bandom bagel in your mouth. <laughs> there you go. And a trench coat. <laughs> Perfect. Boom. Um, no, it's a bagel. It's like a, it's like a munchkin donut. It's like a munchkin jelly donut. Yeah. It's a bagel stuffed with cream cheese, a bagel filled with cream cheese. There could be so many other cool names for it. Um, and I think they'll find one. It's not yeah. that hard. And I think they have 18 variants of this. It's yeah. pretty cool. Which is cool because there are a lot of bagels, especially in New York. Like, there's all different kinds of bagels. They're all good. You know, I'm really excited for it. And it is. It's like bagels are terrible for you. You know, and they're delicious. So it's a way to get, like, a it all in one. I'm not a big fan of cream cheese, though. I feel like they should have butter or jelly or something else in there, too, which I'm sure eventually they'll have. I like onion and chive. Inside the bagel? In the cream cheese, yeah. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm not a fan of cream cheese. They should have butter, too. I don't think. Butter melts, though. Yeah, but so does cream cheese if it's hot. I don't know. I don't know either. Um, but I think they got a good good thing going here. They have, um, it only costs 30 cents. They sell it for fifty, and people buy them. Would yeah. you buy it? I think so. Dollar fifty for a little bite, bagel bite. That is the difference. So if you think about like Dunkin' Donuts or something, like for a few bucks you get, you know, twelve or twenty four. Yeah, but this is also like a like, you know, I mean, the, the problem with the bagel, like you're eating literally a bagel. I think is the equivalent of four or five loaves of bread, right? And so if you're eating one of these, like one bagel equals four loaves of bread. Yes. So if you're eating one of these things, Holy it's like crap. a me- you're it's like a meal, you know. So this is like let's say one or or one and a half pieces of bread, and so why that equi- is that? Sorry, I can't get past that. Why? Why? Do you know why? I don't know why. Why? I, if you guys out there know why, why is one bagel equivalent to four loaves of bread? Like a loaf of bread? Not not a full loaf of bread. I'm sorry, slices, slices. Oh, I'm like, what are you talking about? <laughs> okay, for I can like I had My a bagel apologies. yesterday. I'm like, holy crap! I'm not gonna eat. You know, well, I'm not that girl, but I'll I'll eat a bagel anyway. But yeah, no, no, no. I meant slices. Oh, I was like, Philip. Okay, um, that makes sense. So Mark kind of gets a little bit. I don't know if I agree with this. Mark kind of gets a little bit annoyed with the fact that they say that they're coachable. How do you feel about that? I feel that's a good thing. That they're coachable. Yeah. I feel like it's a good thing, too, but it, I guess to him it makes him feel like they don't know which direction they're going in, which to me is kind of like that's the whole point that you're on the Shark Tank. Like, Here's so- what I don't like. What I don't like, it. I, my first thing to them would have been like 275000 for 11%. Are you insane? Well, you know why the reason is 11 because they've already given out 23% of the company. So they've already raised money and given away 23% of the company, so or 22% of the company, whatever it was. So 11 makes it 33%, so it's a third partners. So mm-hmm. it would be they would have a third, these other people would have a third in this person. So they wanted to keep that. I believe that's why they did that. But still, it's dumb. Yeah. Do 10%. <laughs> Do 10. Or 15. Or 15, but if it's like you want to be that third person, you know what I mean, if you want that third ownership so it's you know equally mm. split whatever do 10 but yeah I, I hate when people have random numbers where it's like i'll do two hundred and seventy five thousand for 18 percent come on yeah no um i don't know i'm really excited to do this i feel like the, the offers were a little bit barbara two hundred fifty thousand fifty one percent that was a little bit absurd you think that she should that that was worth it i mean clearly they been. didn't they didn't. I, Kevin, I mean, never. Here's why it wasn't worthwhile. Kevin and Barbara rarely agree. 
Right. And they agreed. I get that. But Lori rarely underbids or underbids. You know, like, why would Lori underbid by 20%? 20%. She offered him 30%. After Barbara... And she went down to 25. And she went down to 25. And she got to deal with him. But I think this will be awesome. I really think this is going to be a good thing. I think we're going to start seeing this more and more. But, you know, I hope they taste as good as he is because I'm sure they taste really good. Everyone seemed to really like them. Yeah. Anything else about Bantam Bagels before we go to our update? That's it. That's it. In our news, we got the ham boards. Dude, Dude, I so want one. Yeah, I could see I could see you riding to after buzz on one. Oh, like, hey, down the one oh one? Yeah, yeah, where can I put <laughs> my board? Yeah, you need a board rack. That's I mean it's surfing and skateboarding together. Super fun. And of course Rob loves this. Yeah. Like paddle he's probably board. doing this in his house as we speak. Probably. Going around. Got the yeah. update. But so before Shark Tank, they made a deal with Robert for three hundred thousand dollars for thirty percent. Before Shark Tank, they did two hundred and twenty five thousand dollars and now they've done a million dollars. I mean, they're based at a Huntington Beach, which is a big surf place. And you know what? I was there not too long ago and I didn't see these. I I should look. I really wanted to what, what I like is that they these. they're still keeping it in Huntington Beach. It still feels like a you know, we made it type of product. Yeah, it's like a beach um, like Hobie or something. And and, and 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 Robert's really helping with them, you know, control quantity and quality at the same time. So, you know, we can produce a lot, but we're not letting the quality go, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, and, and it's a family business. Yes, it is. So, you know, we're, we're big fans of the handboards. We need some handboards. You guys should send them over here to us, and we'll roll around after buzz on some handboards. Doorman, get to work. Doorman, get to work. Um, all right, well, is there anything else that uh, stuck out to you about this episode before we wrap it up for the evening, Phil? It'll be interesting. You know, they got a Tuesday episode and they got a Friday episode coming up, so we'll see how we handle that here at yes. Afterbus TV. But for that, you just got to follow. You guys can find me on Instagram and Twitter at I am Steph Z with an F. And, of course, at Afterbuzz TV on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. We'll let you know. Yeah, we'll let you guys know. Thanks for watching, listening. Send us your comments, questions. We love you guys. Have a great night. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, you later. So I the views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.